Welcome back to another FEMAP tutorial and in this uh, episode we're gonna take a look at a bridge that has uh, two force members make a giant truss all the way across and we have it represented in FEMAP by this geometry. We have a bunch of points connected by rods and we're not gonna set up all of this at this point we should have enough knowledge of how this was set up. If you accidentally just found this video and you don't, didn't see any of the previous videos make sure you go back in the playlist and take a look at some of the earlier more beginner videos but here uh, we're not gonna set it up we're just gonna go through it and analyze it see how it was set up what did the was applied where was it applied and what after the analysis what uh, did they come up with okay so let's get started we're gonna go through it in the same order as I would uh, actually almost be like setting it up from scratch right so we have the geometry probably we had a bunch of dots we aligned uh, lines everywhere making sure it matches the bridge or whatever we're trying to model right these are all uh, two force members remember they're a truss there's no none of these have something applied to the middle or center or torsion to it or anything of that nature good so we most likely would go first to geometry curve line and uh, either by points let's say or project project points and then pick this and then just pick your points and connect them up then let's see what kind of material did they use go to model material we would set it up here we want to check what did they set up so on the left hand side model go here material my aluminum if you wanted to edit it or take a look at the details click edit here you go now we can see what was entered okay uh, next I would go model and set up the properties what did they set up properties looks like there was two rods set up let's check out the first one right click on it go to edit here you go we can tell the area what kind of material was it applied okay the other one edit there you go there you go rod one rod two okay so what would I do next I would connect it materials rods I would have to apply some boundary conditions right so let's take a look at our constraints if I would be setting it up I would go model constraints probably on this point that point that point and that point right so apply it to a point we're gonna go check out what did they apply constraint at the base constraint definitions so left base right click edit constraint we could tell that on the left base here they did pins okay if you want to see you're not sure where what do they mean by left then click edit where applied see it shows the two go to highlight bam it shows you look these two are the points where that was applied okay canceled out the right base let's see where it was applied at these two points highlight there you go it shows it same thing edit let's see what kind of uh, constraints t and uh, uh, y and z is constraint x is allowed to uh, have a translation okay let's see oh okay we have a third one okay so for this one we'll come back if you see this node you should uh, recognize it that this is a displacement kind of load okay not a force or anything else displacement kind of load that means this nod node was um, displaced by a certain distance and then it was fixed there okay so uh, we can do control Q and go to labels and let's take a look at our geometry points and curves these are our identities of all the nodes and if you only the curves then these are all of our uh, curves if I don't want to see curves and points 
will go up here, turn this off, and the cyan color turn to white. Now this is not the geometry anymore, this is the mesh. So Control Q again. Now labels, I can visualize the nodes, not the points. The points belong to the geometry. Nodes belong to the mesh. So nodes, these are all my nodes. And the elements. There you go. The lines are <coughs> excuse me, the lines are elements now, not uh, curves. Okay. So actually I'm going to leave the element and let's see, we want to see, we just looked at constraints, right? So why don't we visualize them? Let's see, there you go, now we have T's over here and on the other side, number 2 and 3, 2 and 3. Those are representing a translation. Let's do our loads. I want to see the loads, uh, let's see, force and bearing, uh, all of these displacement, velocity, any, any of these, let's say if they were applied, they should show up, right? Okay, and here you go, we have 0 0.1 displacement node, and we see that there's more than one applied, one, two, three, four of them, right, four, yeah, four of them was applied on this mesh. Okay, so, and all of these are two force members, right, oh, no, no, back up, back up, back to the displacement load. The software requires us that after we apply a displacement load, we go back and constrain the direction in which the displacement load was applied. So since this is applied in the negative y direction, after we applied it, the displacement load, we would have to go back and apply a constraint to the same locations and constraining the direction in which this lo the displacement load was applied. So if we click on it, edit constraint, let's see, see the Y is constrained. We want to see where was it applied, see where the displacement loads are applied at those nodes. Okay, so that's how the software works. Sometimes it can be counterintuitive. I have a video on this, on displacement load. Make sure you go and check it out so you can get a better understanding on this. And uh, let's see what else we have. Meshing, right? We would have to mesh. So this is what I wanted to say earlier. These are all two force members. You can't discretize this setup in more than one element. It, it'll uh, buckle or, or kink like a chain if uh, it'll be in compression. So. Every, all of these need to be uh, mesh, control mesh, and along the curve, and we would have to choose element, uh, number of elements as one for all of them. Then go to geometry curve and actually mesh the whole thing. Good. At that point we would be all done, and we could go to model analysis. This is static type of analysis. We can see here, what they chose, static, nonlinear, static. After they ran the analysis, let's see what, what they ended up with. Analysis, there it is. There's our uh, results. So go to view, select, deform, beam diagram, deform and, uh, deform and contour data. Uh, let's put rod axial force. Okay, leave that. Let's see. Okay, okay. And there you have it. These are the results. We could see that's the displaced. This is the original. Displayed, original. Here's a little video. Cool. Uh, let's see, let's see, if we wanted to, well, let's see, I don't want to see any of this anymore. Um, put back the original. And what about the free body diagram? Did they set one up? Yeah, there you go. So let's uh, click OK. And now we can all see some reactions. And let's see, go down here. Oh, there you go, the other direction. There you go, reactions, free body diagram. Let's see the other side. Is 
Cool. All right. Alrighty, so that should do it, I believe. And we could, of course, check other stuff if you want in view. Rotate, select, but I'll leave those options to you. Have fun with them. And let's see, label, cross-section area, show the rods maybe. Okay, see the rods that they set up. And yeah, this was set up all by rods. Rod kind of elements. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that's it for this video. Uh, make sure you tune in for the next one, and like and subscribe. Have a good one.